devoured up here. Hey, I know the hey. feeling. Okay, I want to ask you all a question. And that question is, what, you do? What, what in your life did you love the most? Did you like ice cream? Do you have an ice cream that you love and you love it so much? Did you have a parent that you love and you love so much? Yeah. Did you have anything that you have loved so much? Maybe a dog that died that mm. you loved so much. Well, I'm here to tell you that God loves you a billion times more than that love that you had for those things. You can't put a number on how much he loves you. I can't stand here and say he's a billion times what your love was because it's more than that. We all have something we love a lot. Let me tell you another thing. In Jeremiah 29. Man, I got these things all over. <laughs> I can't even do nothing. Uh, Man. Just be cool. Everything is all right. <laughs> there we go. Now Take a deep breath. <laughs> okay. There you go. Now I can move. Maybe. Like oh, okay. Jeremiah 29 11. This is one of my most wonderful verses in the Bible that I have. My wife and I love this verse. We love it so much that we have put a plaque in the middle of our living room mm. with, this, with these words. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. John 1, 1, 9 reads, We confess our sins. He is faithful and, and, and will purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus died on the cross for us, for our sins. If we confess our sins, he will forgive us, and he will make us a new person. Every one of us has troubles and terrible things have happened to us. Yeah. I know there's several people that are homeless, that have nothing. These things happen for a reason. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just ask him into your heart. He won't let you down. John 1, 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Some of us think that we can do it by ourselves. But without him, nothing is possible. With him, everything is possible. Yes, yes. We must have faith and trust in him. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. He will surprise you. You will do things you have never done before. Amen. He has changed my life. Hmm. I never thought that I would be speaking on the subject of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Oh. That was the farthest thing from my mind. I hear you. Me too. He has led me to the Good News Club. I have taught six years in the Good News Club, the second and third graders, the love of Christ. He's brought me to be a deacon here at the church. And that is the last thing I ever thought would happen to me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> to me. I might be a little rough on the outside, yeah. but I'm like a little teddy bear inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a deacon here at the church. All of this 
has happened because he changed me. Amen. You would not believe what I was. Hey, yeah, I would. I would swear up and down. <laughs> I would say terrible things about God. I didn't believe in God. But he changed me. The minute I was saved, I was changed. He puts it into your heart. Yeah. I have I've been changed because I have a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I do. He changes you. Ask my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have the feelings you get with a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have no fear of death. We don't die. We go on living in heaven forever. A lot of people are afraid to die. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know where you're going. That's it. And you ain't afraid to go there. You have no fear of death. That's it. I don't. No. He gives us confidence to do things we have never done before. Yes. He has gave me so much confidence <laughs> that I'm doing things that it's just unbelievable. <laughs> me too. I still look back it at still blows what mind. I was and what I am today. Yep, yep. And he gives you a great belief, like no other, knowing that how bad it is, or how bad it gets, with him, it will get better. <laughs> That's it, yes. And number four, the one thing that we all have to decide, and it is the most difficult decision, which to make. But it really isn't a difficult decision to make. It's the only decision to make. Amen. He gives you eternal life. And it's your choice if you want to live in heaven or hell for the rest of your life. Yeah. I would like to close with this one thing as a deacon. I have witnessed the love of Christ firsthand through the visitation that we have with the deacons here at the church that go out with the uh, people that are dying in hospitals, nursing homes. First was Fred Stanley. He was a wonderful, wonderful Christian here at the church. He loved Jesus Christ. I had a talk with him at his house while he was feeling pretty good, pretty bad. He was on his way out. And he told me how much he loved Jesus and how he wanted to leave here. And he knew what was coming. And when I walked in that house and started to talk to him, I was afraid to talk to him. Because I always thought Fred was so much above me. But when I got done talking to him, We were like brothers. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Cliff Smith. He was a, just the most wonderful Christian. And he was so good in the Good News Club. Yeah. He knew how to teach these children the love of Christ and bring them to Christ. He had a knack. When I went in the hospital to talk to him, it was like a different world. This man was dying. He was sitting in bed. He didn't have much longer to live. And all we did was tell jokes. I sat at the side of his bed, and he talked about his family, and he said, the only thing I'm going to miss is my beloved June his wife, and children. But he knew where he was going. Yeah. 
yeah. and he had that smile on his face hmm. that he knew where he was going. And that is what everyone needs to know. Amen. That these people are so special. Mm -hmm. No more special than all of you out there. Right. Everyone needs to know where they're going. You need to have Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen. He will take care of you. Amen. No matter where you are and what, 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 if you're homeless, if you're rich, it doesn't matter. We all got problems. That's it. And Jesus knows what your problem is. And the next one was Bob Gift. Bob Gift is still alive. And he's doing well. We placed him at Summit Place. His family put him in Summit Place. I just recently had a visit with him. And we were sitting on the front porch. And he was diagnosed with first stage dementia, soon to be second stage dementia. And we were talking about his family and his life and how things have gone in his life and how he knows that where he's going. And we sat there and he was quiet. And I talked to him and I said, don't worry, he said, I might forget, but he will never forget. Amen. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Now, Mr. Paul. Oh, yeah. Remember Mr. Paul? Yeah. Mr. Paul is in Whitesville in hospice. Oh. He's been hanging on for a long time. Yeah. It took him 94 years to come to Christ. Right. 94 years to come to Christ when he and was saved. Put him in Amen. Damn so that's my message to you. You have it is never, never too late. Amen. He is still alive. We had a long talk. He just wants to go home. Mm. He's lived that. a long time. Tired. And he's in Whitesville. Yeah. In hospice is where he is. Hmm. Let me leave this one thing with you all. Jesus gives you the thought, but you have got to do the homework. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.